This information is provided for information. If you decide to copy what I do in this video, you're doing it at your own risk. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing with lead acid batteries, then you can quickly cause yourself some injury uh, to do with acid splashes or, or even a battery explosion. So please be careful. Hi all, AC Doddy. I thought I'd put together a little video on um, uh, rejuvenating uh, car, classic car batteries. One of the issues you get with uh, old classic cars uh, is they sit around a while and people quite often uh, buy a new car battery and then just let it sit uh, for six months and uh, it dies. Um, and typically what happens is with lead acids, they just get sulfated up. So uh, there's a couple of things you can do to, to rejuvenate them. Uh, it's worth mentioning at this point that um, uh, if you have an old car battery that may be you know, five or 10 years old, um, if the chemistry is worn out, i.e. that battery has been used all the time, um, you, you know, there's no point trying to rejuvenate that because if the chemical reactions, uh, you know, the, 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 the elements inside have been used up, uh, you're not going to rejuvenate that battery. Okay, so there's no point in trying. So really, if you've got a, um, a younger battery that was perhaps not been stored correctly or it's been left on a car with the headlights on for six months and it's dead flat, uh, then actually uh, there's, there's some real benefit in trying to rejuvenate that battery. So um, uh, without further ado, let's go out and, and I'll show you what I've got planned um, so you can see what I intend to do. Okay, first thing to do, uh, you notice we've uh, we've moved outside. So uh, this is the battery. Um, whenever you're working with lead acid batteries and you're doing any charging, remember they produce hydrogen uh, during the uh, when they're gassing off. So uh, always best to do any charging outside, uh, especially if you're going to do any equalisation charging and really make this uh, battery work hard. So uh, this is what we've started off with. Uh, this was donated to me by Thomas Classic and Modern, and he assured me it's a dead battery. So. Um, it doesn't look particularly old, um, so we're going to re try and rejuvenate this one. Um, so basically, I just wanted to make a video of what I do to try and rejuvenate a battery. This may or may not be successful. First job in looking at old batteries is to give them uh, a clean on the top to get rid of any detritus. Uh, and the reason for that is, um, A, it gets rid of any acid that may be present on top of the battery. Um, and also, uh, you can actually get a conducting path along the top of the battery for electrical currents that can uh, conduct between the two terminals. So always start off by giving the top of the battery a good clean. Now it's a good idea to wear gloves uh, when you're messing around with batteries um, but what I've basically done is clean that and then wash my hands afterwards. Um, what you can also do is, is wipe the battery down with a, um, a s s uh, bicarbonate of soda solution um, so that you neutralise any acid on the outside uh, and that makes the battery a lot more um, friendly to handle etc while you're doing this. Anyway, one of the first things you want to do is to start to look at the condition of the battery. So for this you'll need a multimeter, which I've got here. So we'll just set this up and we'll look at the voltage. Okay, so I've connected our uh, multimeter, uh, set that up to the voltage uh, setting there, uh, 20 volts DC. This is just a basic uh, automotive multimeter. As you can see, we've got 10 volts across the terminal, so that battery is well and truly flat. At this stage, we don't know if it's got a duff cell or if it's just been overly discharged. So uh, one of the other problems you're gonna find, maybe uh, with a voltage that low, is sometimes a typical smart charger, which is I've got here, uh, may or may not start charging. So we'll connect that up and see what happens. If you have one, you can also use a battery analyzer. So uh, I've connected this one up. I've connected it up after it's been connected to the charger for a little bit. But the point is here, it, it can tell you now. So the ratings, as it says on there, uh, 330 amps. So the rating's 330, but the actual measured is only 44. So you can see that this battery is in all kinds of problems. So um, looking at the next page, uh, it gives us the uh, state of charge 15%, um, and it also gives us the uh, resistance, the internal resistance at 76.67 milliohms, which if it was a good battery, would be about three to five milliohms. So we can see we've got a lot of work to do. Anyway, we'll use this uh, analyzer to give us uh, an idea of what's going on as we 
um, continued with the uh, uh, rejuvenation process. Okay, so we've got our charger on and immediately that's gone to 15 volts and it's saying that it's charging. Okay, so you can see now this is a sign of a, a battery that uh, potentially wants to come back because the volt terminal voltage is coming down. Now that's a good thing because what that basically means is our battery is taking a charge. Now, the other type of thing you can do with a charger, like this, is just vary the current. So we'll just drop the current down a bit because this is not a particularly big battery. Okay, so we'll say, leave it at four amps. 3.9 is fine. And you can see the terminal voltage, 14.3. The actual voltage at 14.19 is coming down. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that on for a bit and just see how that uh, see how that um, comes down and see if we get any heat produced. Now I haven't uh, tried to check the um, contents of the battery, uh, the, the the water levels yet, but I'm going to see if it takes a charge first. The other thing I've noticed is you can see there's a little bit of bulging on the outside, so this is not generally a good sign. Um, so this may be that the battery itself has gone too far but we can only try that by getting in and understanding what it's going to do when we try and charge it so we're going to leave that now come back to it later and see what we got okay so uh, just as we go into the charge, we're about an hour into the charging and you can see the voltage has dropped now uh, to 12.76 and she's still taking four amps so that kind of does indicate that um, you know even though she's taking four amps there's a good capacity there so uh, this you know this battery at the moment doesn't look too bad um, and also uh, it's not getting warm so I'll continue charging and see where we go some of these uh, modern battery chargers uh, if you look at the current output it says 5.4 amps you might think you're overcharging your battery well that's the actual current that's being driven into that battery at the moment so it's about four amps so uh, i always recommend when you're battery charging um, to use some independent um, instrumentation to actually verify what's going on so that uh, you can actually be in full control of uh, your charging process okay some time has moved on there so we finished the first charge um, and i've uh, left the battery for three days just to see uh, to make sure it doesn't discharge and uh, looking at the analyzer we've got uh, first connection on there we've got 12.71 volts so that's uh, that's quite promising that it hasn't lost any charge so uh, obviously this is only the first recharge um, and i fear that we're going to have to do a number of these to bring this battery back uh, but it's looking promising so far so uh, let's go through and uh, do the test and just see how we've improved. Okay, it still says replace battery, uh, but it now says we've got 194 cranking amps rather than the 20 odd or whatever, or 40, whatever it was when we started. Um, let's have a look at the resistance. So we're down to 16.31 milliohms from 70 odd, uh, which is which is excellent. Uh, it says it's fully charged, but obviously state of health there says only 49%. So as I say, we've only just started, so we need to uh, move on to the next stage. But before we do that, we're gonna do one more test. This is a, what they call a carbon pile uh, load, test, uh, load tester. So what this basically does um, is it enables you to put uh, a a particular load which is sized to the battery um, on the battery and then we can physically measure what happens under load and see if that battery can actually deliver the required starting current so in this case um, we just take the rating off the top of the battery so we look at the cold cranking amps which is 330 we look at the scale and then we look at battery cold cranking amps and we dial up to 330 on that scale and then we look over it and we see if the needle's in the green or the red, depending on the temperature we're at. 
So let's give that a try now. The, uh, the other good thing about doing this is because it actually physically stress tests the battery, uh, it is um, uh, quite possible that the battery could actually fail during this test uh, because it's putting a load on it. But that's uh, actually what we want to happen if it's a, a weak battery. So uh, let's go ahead and do this test. With the load tester all hooked up, uh, we can see that we've got uh, just about 12.7 on the scale, all hooked up there to the battery. So we just turn the load now until we get 340 on the bottom scale. Go quite quickly. There we go. Beautiful. And then we go over and we take a reading and we can see we're down to 8 volts, which is poor. So the buzzer there tells us to take the load off. So we can see that this battery is far from serviceable at the moment. So what we now need to do is to move on to the next stage. Okay, so after that testing, what we now need to do um, is look at charging. Now you may be wondering why uh, at this point I haven't looked at the water in the top. Well, this particular battery has a bonded on top. So the only way we're gonna get inside is by drilling holes in the top and I'd only want to do that if I really really have to. I've looked through the side with a torch and I can see that the water level is reasonable so uh, the electrolyte is uh, where it should be at least. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to change chargers and we're going to go for something a little bit more uh, extravagant. So this charger first of all we're going to switch it on and we're going to look at the charging current and we're going to set that at uh, something sensible like four amps now again uh, don't trust the scale on these chargers because again this is uh, uh, one of those chargers where the scale doesn't necessarily read right the voltage does but the amps don't so i'll use my uh, ammeter to set the charge current so about four amps that's what we want as you can see that one says nearly seven so this is a scale which is reads nearly twice out but uh, four amps is what we want. So we're gonna charge that now back up to uh, the uh, about 14.7 volts. But more importantly than that, the reason why we've changed chargers is once we get back to that voltage, this charger enables us to do what they call an equalization charge, uh, which is actually overcharge the battery in a controlled manner, and it will help boil off and um, break up any sulfation inside. So we're actually gonna do that for 24 hours. So that's quite a long time. But first, recharge, and then we'll go to equalization. Okay, so we've been going about uh, four and a half hours now, and uh, we still haven't reached peak voltage, so we're not far off. And we're still taking four amps. So the problem with this is we definitely had some deep-seated uh, deep seated sulfation, which is why it's taking so long uh, to get to the peak voltage. But it's improving, so uh, and it's not getting warm. That's the main thing. The, uh, the battery itself is staying uh, cool, so hopefully, um, after 24 hours of this, this battery should be in better condition. So uh, join me in part two and we can see if it's worked or not. 